Peekaboo. Hello, it's Brittany from the Emporium. Today we're gonna to be making the one with more me know. This is a pattern by Sincerely Jen Patterns and it comes <laughs> in the summer project box. George wanted to say hi. Um, I loved making this bag. Uh, I made a tester bag and then this one. Um, so I've been carrying my tester one around for a couple months. I absolutely love it. This one's amazing too. Um, so you've got your, it's a really nice size. The box comes with everything you need to make it. Your exterior fabric, lining fabric, zipper tape, hardware, um, magnets, which I guess is included in hardware. Um, you get a cork label and you get a woven tag and some other goodies. It's so good. Uh, but so nice size bag, crossbody strap, You've got an amazing big slip pocket in the back. The main compartment stays closed with a magnet. And there are gonna be some other videos where there's like a zipper panel at the top. You can watch those too. Uh, Lauren included extra zipper tape and an extra zipper pull if you want to do that. Um, inside, there is a zipper pocket. It's nice and roomy. Your front panel, has this nice big slip pocket and it does stay closed with a magnet and it also has a very nice size zipper pocket so it's an amazing bag um, again this is uh, by sincerely Jen patterns and Lauren from more me know um, I'm so absolutely honored to be a part of this I words cannot express how I feel about this um, I love my bag I've been carrying. I can't wait to keep this one for myself as well and carry it around. I can't wait to make so many more. can't wait to see all the bags everyone else posts. Um, I just can't wait. I, I'm just so excited. I, I don't know what to say. Uh, but thank you so much for watching my video. I don't think I make too many mistakes. I do make mine completely to the pattern. Um, I, the only thing I changed was I put my own cork label and instead of using the lining for zipper tabs, I used the print. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. If you could subscribe and like and comment on the video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you so much and have a great day. All right, cutting portion. So just to recap, um, I took my snips out of the box already but you get the pattern and I've already cut out the pieces and here's the full pattern you get your printed exterior and your solid color lining some zipper tape all the hardware you get some of the teal clips a cork label the notepad and this amazing ruler and the box and there's also a woven label that didn't come in time for my box. Um, I'm so excited because I don't have to interface anything. So literally, this is everything I need. I just happened to pull one of my own business tags out. So, all right. Let's see. Um, so there is a cut list to go along with the four pattern pieces. And also, I apologize because I have two crazy kittens and George that are running around. Um, and I've had to take them off the table 10 times, which I'm sure at some point they will be in this video. All right, so I'm gonna start with my back. Well, actually, I'm going to start with my crossbody strap, and there's George, which is four inches times 52 inches, which is basically the length of it's a little bit less but I like doing the width of fabric so I'm just going to take hopefully I'm not getting too in the way I probably am where did my rotary blade go ah, I moved it because of the cat go George if you're going go go He's leaving my office. He's been coming in through the <laughs> ceiling to see the kittens, but it turns out um, he just really likes their food. All right. I also use my bigger rotary blade 
that I use on interfacing and I cut a lot of felt for cat toys. Um, I use it whenever I'm cutting waterproof canvas or water resistant canvas. I just don't want to dull my fancy fabric one, kind of like scissors. All right, so we've got this and we need two strap connectors and a back pocket piece out of the exterior. I think I'm done with that for now. But I also need my main panel and I'm going to cut this first to make sure I don't run out of space for it. Um, we're cutting this on the fold. Someone told me that I should get a um, seam roller for one of this canvas when I was doing my car trash can video and I think that's an amazing idea. I just need to actually order it. Let's see here. Let's see if I can hold this down. I don't know where my pattern weights are, which would be very helpful right now. All right. I already cut into the paper pattern. This is why I need templates for literally everything in my life. <laughs> Also, I use my scissors that I don't use to cut regular fabric, and I do this as well. I'm really bad about cutting corners in and out, and I think I need to fix the bottom. one exterior and two linings. What I like to do is set this aside for lining. Lining, okay, one exterior. All right, we'll do our back main next since it's another bigger piece. kind of like set it under there and I like to just slide the fabric until I get to where I need to be. rotary blade. So I'm going to be very careful as I can. Actually what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to take the marking pen that came in the box and I'm just going to mark my curve there. And then I'm going to kind of skip that little section for now. You could also um, skip cutting the box corners um, in like with the rotary blade and mark them out. Whatever works best for you. All Need to change my rotary blade. I actually had one come in today and I meant to change it out before I did this video and I did not. <laughs> Alright, 
Alright, so I had marked that curve, so I'm just holding the folded pieces together. Looks pretty good. Alright, back main is only an exterior. I'm going to set this aside. AKA just toss it up there. Okay. So we have one of the front pocket pieces we're going to fold at the dashed line. And we need one exterior this way. I swear they just uh, decide to mess more stuff up in my office when I'm doing videos. It's like they know I'm not going to run over and reprimand them. Uh, I have a bunch of cat toys in progress just went flying to the floor. I did not cut through. I really need to change that blade. Lauren made a sticker reminding everyone nicely. <laughs> to change the rotary blade, um, I should probably listen. All right. So as far as pattern pieces, like paper pattern pieces go, we're done with this, but I still need a back pocket B and strap connectors. Goodness gracious, one second. and strap connectors. So 10 by 9, which I should have a ruler for. Um, these squares are amazing to always have everywhere. All right, I'm going to, I can see my salvage through here. I'm just going to cut it off so that I get a good area. And then cut this. Our 10 by 9 pocket B. And then I just need my crossbody straps or <laughs> connectors, sorry two two by four um and this is where george go <laughs> i'm going to use this so lauren has these thicker lines on this ruler that comes in the box and literally these are it's perfect so good um i since there's two of them i'm just going to cut both of these areas zipper tabs say lining do I want to I think I might do mine with the exterior let's be different so for two and one fourth by one and one fourth do I have enough I think I do I'm just going to go across and cut that one and one fourth. 
as far as I can go. And then cut them down. This is how I do my zipper tabs a lot. Right. And then I want to square this off on the edge. Okay. So two and one fourth by one and one fourth. And I need four of these. I think I have enough. Ooh. Careful you don't cut yourself too. Cut right into my finger the other day with scissors because I am talented. All right, there's my four lining or my four zipper tabs my two strap connectors I have my back pocket B I have my exterior front and back and my crossbody strap I am done with my exterior print and now we'll move to front lining all right so I am going to start with my paper pieces again. You have the main panel and you need two cut from the lining. Okay, I'm gonna move these as well. This is a bigger piece of fabric. Kitten knocked a bunch of cat toys over and dumped catnip and now George is over there going to town eating catnip off the floor. Alright. Okay, so this is the water resisting canvas and I have only used it once or twice. But from what I understand, you can wrinkle it. And wherever you see the lines is the wrong side. Which doesn't really matter for cutting, but that will come in handy to know for sewing the bag. Yes. Alright, so this is on the fold. did not cut these papers as straight as I possibly could have. I had like a lot of problems flaring up in my hands and using scissors has been difficult. Almost got it all. Just this one little spot. And this spot. <laughs> Just one little spot in like three different spots. It's okay. Okay, so this is definitely the wrong side. Okay, and then we need two of these. So we'll do another one. I'm just going to slide this up since I already have it folded.
Okay, so then we have two of these and we already cut one exterior. We are done with that piece. Set it to the side. Now we have our front pocket. You need two of the lining cut full and then one where we fold it over like we did on the exterior piece. Come on. And actually, now they're the same height. I was going to say which would be better to save my fabric. One, and then like I said, we need two cut like that. I'm gonna go back up to the top of my fabric. I'm really bad at like, effectively using my space. So sometimes I feel, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I did such a good job. So what does everyone else do? Do you go left to right or do you work top to bottom or, I don't know, help me. I think it's mostly my blade has a nick in it. Hello, Luna. Okay, two, and now we're going to fold this down and cut one from the lining that way. this piece cut on the fold. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, something you can do is clip your pattern pieces to the fold. Thanks, Luna. Alright, I'm going to mark this curve again because I don't want to mess it up with the rotary blade. No, Luna. No. Okay, so with it held together, I am going to cut this spot. I'm having a hard time holding it. Okay. Now I can make sure that's matched up and cut it. And I think it might have been the angle. Again, what whatever you know, works for you and makes things easier. I know everyone does things different ways and that is completely okay. All right, so that's our last paper pattern piece. We're done with it. Luna. But we do have a couple pieces we need to cut. 
let's see here. I already cut my pocket zipper tabs. So I need pocket contrast A, pocket contrast B, and my interior zipper pockets. Okay, and this, pay attention really well to these marking, uh, these uh, measurements. When I made my tester bag, I messed up one of these and I was like panicking. I'm like, my bag's not working. I messaged Alex and Lauren. I'm like, someone please help me. Um, I just didn't measure a piece right and it completely messed everything up. So yeah, it's important. All right. This is one of my favorite size rulers too. So I need 13 and a half by one and a half. Let's see. I'm going to square this piece off. Okay, and let's see here. This is the wrong side. I'm going to write what it is on it. Now we need 13 and a half. Uh, where is this off right here? Girlie, why don't you go play? All right, 13 and a half by three and one fourth. Which side is it? <laughs> this one. And these are different enough. I really didn't need to write that, but it's okay. All right, now we just need our interior zipper pockets. Two of those, and we have the whole bag cut out. And again, we don't have to interface anything, which is the best news in the world. I don't think I have made an entire bag that you don't have to interface in I don't know I mean I made a tote bag recently but I feel like that doesn't completely count this ruler is going to be the perfect size for this We are done cutting, I think. Yes. <laughs> all right, time to sew. So I went ahead and I grabbed all my stuff. Um, I put the paper pieces clipped to the pattern pieces. I went ahead and I did an couple extra labeling on the pieces so I don't get confused because that's just me um and I went ahead and drew lines one inch in on the connectors and two inches in on my crossbody strap um in the cutting video I didn't do it but I did go and cut the selvage off of the crossbody strap portion um, I oiled my machine, something that, um, I forget to do a lot. I was going to put a new needle in, but I remembered I did that, um, last time I sewed. Um, but I have two fresh on bobbins. I am ready to go. I'm going to do my strap first because I have a full bobbin. Um, a lot of people use tape. Um, I just have had bad experiences with it, so I'm not going to... Um, so I'll try to do this as fast as I can. I might end up speeding through this, but I just go through and finger press as I go and clip down each side. 
And then once I get both sides clipped, I um, clip them together. So I will definitely speed this part up so it is not as long and boring. Right, so now that that is done, I love this print. It's like more pink on this side and all greens and blues on this side. So cool. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure this is lined up. You can like finger press it as you go, but by the time I sew it together, um, it should come together. I'm gonna use a four and a half inch, or a four and a half <laughs> stitch length. I always wanna say inch and That'd be a really long stitch. <laughs> I promise I know how to sew. All right. take get your ends your threads I am going to make sure that these are even and just trim up any unevenness um, this is actually the first time I have made a crossbody strap with all waterproof canvas okay so now the hardware we need for the crossbody strap is our two clasps and 
our slide adjuster. So you're gonna take the slide adjuster and decide which you want to like be the top. I think I'm gonna go pink. All right, I always take the end that I started, um, started and finished stopping on stitching on. Yeah, <laughs> just so it hides it a little bit more. Not that it's ugly, you kind of can't even tell, but um, you could rivet this on. I'm going to stitch it. So I folded it in and I made sure that I did the underneath of this part. Um, but I'm just going to do two lines of stitches right next to each other. And I'm going to drop my stitch length to a four. Make sure you back stitch. Um, you could take it and um, cut the threads off, but I'm just going to move them to the side. I used to make um, dog collars and leashes and like cat collars. That's what I started off making over 11 years ago. So I'm so used to making things with slide adjusters and straps and whatnot. Um, singe my threads again. All right, now we're going to take our clasps. This plastic protects it so well, but it can be <laughs> a little bit difficult to get off. All right. So you're going to take this spot where you fold it over. That's going to be the back. So you want to make sure you don't twist it around. And you're going to put the clasps in this way. Go through this adjuster like this. And you should have, make sure that this is not messed up before you go on. Trust me. <laughs> All right, so with this facing up, you're going to take and go like this. And then this is the back. And the same way I did at the side, I'm just going to fold it over, maybe about an inch, and do some stitches. You could do the strap last, it's actually last in the instructions, but um, I do like doing them first. I have, <laughs> I have a couple of friends that'll be like, I don't want to finish this bag because I don't want to do the strap. I'm like, if you do them first, you get them all the way. And then it's just nice, like, popping the strap on the bag and you're done. Plus, this is the bag you need the strap for. It's not, like, an optional. Alright. This is done. It looks so good. I'm going to set it to the side. All right. I'm also going to set my zipper tabs, zipper tape, and connectors over here. And the first step, we're going to take the back main, which is this piece. And we're going to take the back pocket A, which is <laughs> sorry, it is this piece. I forgot it. it was the paper piece. All right, so these two pieces next. We're going to take the back pocket A, uh, right side up, and take the back. Sorry, this is back pocket A and this is the back main. Um, this is the wrong side, so they're right sides together. I, mean, I am so good at making videos. <laughs> You're going to match them up at the top. And we're going to sew this at a half an inch seam allowance. Uh, 
Um, I do believe when I made my tester, I traced this line out because I didn't trust myself. You can totally do that. Um, if you have something marking your seam allowance, it might be easier too, which I do. Right now I have a little piece of washi tape to hold it on my line. Um, Now what you do next is you fold this over and you're supposed to press it. Um, I'm not going to press it with an iron, but I am going to grab my pinking shears and go around these curves. Um, it'll be easier for me to get it to turn. Um, don't have to go all the way on this straight part, but why not? Alright. So, I'm going to press this down as good as I can. And then it is going to get folded over. Um, I find these clips are good for this stuff. And you kind of play with it. You can get this curve to lay real flat. And um, those the pinking shears definitely helps with that. But I just give it a really good press with my fingers as I'm doing this. And I find it, it it's enough that I, I don't really have to iron it. work it and it will sit. All right. A lot of clips for this little spot, but I don't like to heat my iron up. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to top stitch at a one eighth of an inch seam allowance around this curve. I'm going to put my stitch link back to a four and a half. And take your time on the curve. So flip this over like this and then we're going to take back pocket B and line it up. I'm going to move these pieces. Hopefully I don't wake my cat up. They're sleeping right now. <laughs> it is better for the video that way. Alright, so we're going to line these up and clip them together and you want this facing down also. All right, now we're going to stitch all the way around where these two pieces meet and um, you can fold this like this so that you can get to the spot. Takes a second to get under there. Oh, 
this is supposed to be a half an inch seam allowance, but uh, it is one of those spots that it doesn't really matter. So I kind of made it up as I went, but that's okay. All right. Now you've got this big pocket that's gonna be on the back of your bag and it is amazing. All right, I am following the paper pattern too, just like you would be if you were doing the box. <laughs> Turn the page. I'm gonna put that there and then we're going to set this piece to the side. All right, now we're gonna do our zipper. Um, we want 11 inches. So, one second. needed to get scissors that weren't as good. Okay. <laughs> 11 inches of zipper. And get a zipper pull out. There are three zipper pulls that come in the box in case you wanted to put a zipper at the top of the bag instead of the magnet. I'm making mine per the pattern. Um, I do want to eventually make uh, one that has like a recessed zipper. Uh, I do believe that a couple of the videos will have them. I just didn't get a chance to try it on my own yet. So, okay. <laughs> um, a tip for when you're putting a zipper on by hand is to take the side that was sticking up and put it in first, which I am doing. I'm just putting it in too much apparently. Uh, Lauren's supposed to be getting her own zipper jig things, and apparently I need one. Alright, so we're going to take our zipper tabs. There should be four of them. And they go right sides together on both ends, two of them. Clip them in place both sides. Okay. So the short ends, one half inch seam allowance. Okay, so now you're going to take the zipper tabs and flip them over, give them a good press, and then we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch. You can do that on both sides. There's your zipper. So we're gonna get pocket contrast A and the exterior front pocket. So here is A. And here is my exterior front pocket. Pocket contrast A is going to go right sides together and get clipped. This 
sew together half of an inch seam allowance. Press this up away from the front and top stitch. I'm using a thread that is like a teal blue ombre. So things are like really good with this. All right. Place your zipper. All right, and you're gonna want it, well, most likely you're gonna want it to open this way. So make the zipper face the left. Line it up and clip it in place. My tabs were off just a tiny bit. That's okay. Um, make it work. It's in the seam allowance. Alright. Now this gets sewed together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you're paying attention to the seam allowance in the pattern. Because it does change. And I'm going to be really honest. I have... A very difficult time with 3 8 inch seam allowance on a zipper um, because I don't have a zipper foot so it kind of shifted on me and I went to a one fourth of an inch but I'll show you what I do um, so this is where it shifted on me what I do is I go back And I go just inside that. Why it's gonna let me? It's not very happy. But that's okay. It just this is what works for me. Um but now it's at 3 eighths of an inch. Okay. Okay. So the next thing you're going to do is we have two tall front pocket linings. So when we cut this, we cut two normally, and then we cut one on the dash line. We're going to take one of the ones we cut to the normal pattern size, and we're going to cut half of an inch off of it. And it's coming off of the top. So I'm going to draw a half inch line. And then I'll just use my scissors to cut it. You could do it with the rotary cutter if you wanted. Also, I bought this three pack of Fisker scissors on Amazon, thinking that they were going to be like the great ones that I know and love. They're terrible. I, I, they're, they're so bad. Um, so they are now my trash scissors. All right, but we got the top one half inch off there. We're going to place the lining front pocket that was trimmed 
right sides together with the exterior front pocket that we were just working on. I'm gonna line it up, clip it together, and I'm going to flip this over, actually. And mine, oh, it just needed stretched. Okay, it does line up. And you're going to sew directly over your three-eighths of an inch seam allowance that you already sewed. Um, so what I maybe could have done is when I did the one-fourth, traded it as like a basting the zipper on and then come back in. But either way. you're stopping to move your zipper make sure your needle is down so you don't lose your place okay so now we're going to flip this so that it ends up being wrong sides together going to what I like to do is I line my bottom up it just helps me that we're going to give this a real good finger press both sides and if you don't sew exactly where your line was you can see that but it is on the inside of the pocket so it's okay all right, and now we're going to top stitch down this line. Needle down before you lift your foot. And I am going to pull at this just a little bit as I'm going. If you pull on it too much, you uh, will get a wavy zipper though. Which, it looks a little wavy, but we'll even it out as we go. And once you have the bag um, stuff, you can even tell also. All right, so pocket contrast B now. Right sides together with this. Okay, and this is another three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So my zipper was up there. Gonna move it. You can also use a stiletto to help you try to stay at that three eighths of an inch. It does. It 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 does usually help a lot. Make sure that everything is lined up. It just keeps it from like slipping away from you. I'm gonna close my zipper so that it's not all over the place. I might have actually stayed there. 
so yay, I don't have to redo my line. Okay, so now the remaining color lining front, which you have two left, so take the taller one. Right sides together with the lining front pocket. So, right sides together. This is the right side. This is the right side. Line up this top here. Clip it together. I think that is my top. Yes. added these five teal clips into my pink set. It's so nice seeing them. They're, they were at the top of my bin, so I keep using all of them, but I feel like they're going to be like a surprise every once in a while this, once they get mixed in more. I have a ton of the pink glitter ones, and then last year for Christmas, my best friend gave me a bunch of pink clips in a cute little container that she sewed for me. So, it's usually just pink and white and glitter, but I like the teal in them. They're special. So, we're going on the same stitch line again. page. Okay, so you're going to press pocket contrast B up. And you keep the seam allowance up. You're not going to top stitch this yet. You're going to install one of the magnets on here. So I found the center already. We're going to have the center and one and one fourth inch down. Right here. Oh, come on. Alright, I'm going to do the meal side. Alright, and you want to reinforce this. My child took all my stuff. I use Peltex scraps. So we have two snaps. We're going to need four pieces. I like to just go ahead and mark on them all. While I'm at it. And then, ooh, on our spot we made, I'm gonna mark into that as well. Got my seam ripper. Oh, that's stronger than I'm used to. <laughs> that, or I think someone, <laughs> my. My stepmom tried to put this back in. The end is broken off. <laughs> oh gosh, and it's almost unscrewed. Okay. Well, apparently I need to change my blade, and that would explain that. Not used to that. All right. <laughs> it's going to be fun doing the rest of them. I, at one point, had blades. I have no idea where they are. Also, no idea. Oh, fun times. This is my life. 
don't know where my piece went. I have to grab another one to finish the bag. That's okay. I have plenty. All right. I like to fold mine in. Some people fold theirs out. It's just my preference. Okay. So now we have one half of magnet on and we reinforced it. We're going to baste these sides here. And you have three pieces of fabric in there. And mine did not line up perfectly here. Don't stress about it. It is in the seam allowance. I also like backstitching my base. <laughs> it just happens. Alright, so now we have basted these. We're going to take the remaining shorter lining, which is our last one. And we're going to put it right sides together with pocket contrast B. And half inch. Yes, right there. <laughs> I was like, did I put it the right way? I did. It is okay. Okay, now we flip this up. Press the seam allowance toward the pocket contrast B. So this is going to be pointed down the seam allowance on the back. And then we're going to top stitch through this piece. I kind of got where the magnet was, it moved me over just a touch. You technically could have marked the magnet and installed it after that top stitch if you wanted to. Alright, so now we're going to fold this down over. <laughs> the exterior front pocket and line up the bottom edges this part feels so weird to do but it makes so much sense when it's done all right and then we're going to do a half inch seam allowance Also, when we were cutting the bag out and I said to make sure you are um, paying attention to sizes, this is where I had messed up before I had cut this wrong. It wasn't lining up. It was. I took things apart multiple times. All right, we're going to trim down this seam allowance. But also, it is July now and I do believe I made that bag in February. Or early March and I have carried it every day since then all right we're going to put our arm in and turn this right sides out all right you're gonna want to make sure that this bottom this flat, I'm going to clip it because again, I'm not going to actually press it. Plus this is like waterproof canvas and water resistant canvas and I 
I'm just personally not comfortable pressing it with my iron. Okay, and that'll help me press this top part up. And I'm going to, my zipper is not the best. <laughs> It's okay. The the three eighths of an inch and I we struggle. Uh, it just yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I think I might need to take every bag possible and modify it so, so that it's one fourth an inch everything. All right, we're going to top stitch here and here. Definitely want to make sure it's nice and flat. down when you move the zipper. Ooh, you have a front. Um, if you wanted to, you could like put your logo here or whatever. I think mine where I folded it, has them, it should go away. Okay, so now we're going to take and put this on top of our exterior main panel piece. This is going to go two and a half inches up from the bottom. So, just going to take these off, except for the edge. All right, two and a half inches. Line this up without sliding it so it's crooked. All right, and then, whoop. Definitely wanna make sure it is in place. Okay. Um, you can see this looks a little ripply. Um, it's okay. I promise. Once you fill the bag you absolutely cannot tell. Um, let me make sure here. Okay. So now we're going to sew around here. And it's like a base on the sides, but you want to make it look nice at the bottom that will show. And you want to put it like an eighth of an inch at the bottom. Okay, um, so the 
I did miss it. The other half of the magnetic snap should be installed here. Um, there is a marking on the pattern. So I will go ahead and put that there. You could also, like, once you have the other one on, make sure, just make sure it matches up. Um, and actually that is like right on the money. So. And there are two magnetic snap markings on that pattern piece. Just make sure that you're using the right one on the wrong piece because the main closure that goes on the lining is up higher. Okay. Now, if you're like me and you already have this piece on, make sure you do not go into it and make sure that you put both markings on before you go further. <laughs> I make lots of mistakes. It's okay. Um, how you learn. Um, I know that I actually enjoy watching people that aren't like so perfect at sewing. So hopefully, um, people get something out of my videos where I do nothing perfect ever. <laughs> I really need to change that blade. I'm like mildly afraid I'm going to hurt myself with it now. Um, you could also put like a scrap, a little piece of duct tape over these as well. I have seen people do that. All right. We are done with this piece. We get to assemble the exterior. So we're going to grab our back. Oh, also, hold on. Uh, if you want to put a name tag on, now is the time. And I'm going to. Let me take just a tiny piece of double sided tape and put it on. I need to find my center. Okay. Keep in mind that. Um, you will have your top of the bag seam allowance, so make sure you leave space for that. So, we'll probably be about here. Ooh, put it right sides up, too. Oh, hi, George. Okay, I think this will be good. Um, I have found that a stitch length of four has been working best. Oh, bud. I may have to go. <laughs> Come here. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to get a long tail on my thread. I love the look of the cork tags. I don't think I'm the best at putting them on. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure how I feel about them yet. I think they look great, but I think, I don't know. I think maybe I should stick to metal ones. <laughs> this one through before I get down there. Oh no. No! Make sure your needle is down <laughs> before you lift your presser foot. I think I've said that like three times. I am not good at following my own directions. 
Okay, we're just gonna go down here. I got them. Yay. All right. So then you just knot them off and I'm going to put the tag that came with the buy the box on the in the lining. these down and try to seal them just a little bit. All right, that's cute. I like it. I picked a rainbow one. I tried to get one that had that color to the back. Okay, so both exterior pieces, right sides together, match them up, clip them. trying really hard to keep this in frame because I am a little bit newer to the videos. I used to sew live all the time. It was like a different camera angle too. And it's, I feel like it's just different when you're actually interacting with people, like in real time. Like you want them to be able to see more of you with the machine, but I guess in this instance, I feel like you want to see more of the bag only. All right, so we're going to sew all three sides, regular seam allowance. Um, and where the pocket is, you can feel it. I'm going to back stitch just a little bit. going to box our corners. You're going to put your hand in. We're going to trim down the seam lawns first. I'm sorry. These scissors are terrible. <laughs> I I didn't think to like read the reviews because I thought, oh, Fisker's three pack, yay. Um, but after I found out how bad these were, I, I went and read the reviews <laughs> and I apologize. <laughs> this is like pathetic. Uh, I went back and read the reviews and some people were like, I don't know if they're fake or <laughs> what, but they're, they're supposed to really be Fisker's. We make a lot of felt cat toys for Meowbox and I had bought them for one of my workers. I just like sent them straight to her house and she used them. She didn't say anything. I went to use them and I was like, these are so bad. And she's like, yeah, they are. I, I bought, I bought some other ones and I was like, oh, you didn't tell me. <laughs> so anyways, uh, you reach in if you, if that helps you line up your seams. Um, I like to make sure that this is following this. So I like to feel down a little bit further. 
Um, I'm going to nest my seams where I make these go opposite directions. And I like putting three clips in. Um, clip to your heart desire. Alright. Next one. See, if you put your hand in there, it does it really does help. Alright, so again, I'm going to make sure that it's matching up further down. And clip, clip, clip. Alright. Now I'm going to fold as much as I can. Get this in under the machine. Again, fold, fold. It helps make sure it's lined up too. tell just from the exterior that this bag is gonna be really structured well and we didn't even use any interfacing. All right um trim this down but I'm just gonna kind of go like this. I don't really want to go into those stitches. I don't. Okay I'm going to set this right here and I'm going to grab my strap connectors that I set over here. And I am going to grab tape for the use. So I've already put a line halfway through them. And I'm just going to put my double sided tape on there. And then we're going to take each edge and fold it onto the line. apart. Uh, now, in the instructions, it tells you to slide the triangle on and then stitch up, over, and down. Um, you could also stitch both ends and then right here. Which is what I usually do, actually, but I'm going to do it how the pattern says. I'm going to be follow the rules today. They're not really rules. Alright, so. Basically, you come down as close as you can, which apparently I was there. Across. Um, you might need a scrap of fabric. I was not that close, thankfully. So, down over. And then repeat. myself sometimes. Alright, so now we have both of those done. We're going to take and get our main exterior, or our whole exterior now. Um, you're going to take right sides together. 
and you want it to stick up about a half of an inch. Center it, make sure it's centered. I'm gonna line both of them up before I do anything else. So stick it up about half of an inch. Make sure it's centered. And now I'm going to baste it in. Exterior to the side for now. And I have my lining pieces. Feels so thin now compared to that. Alright, we're going to take... Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mark both of the snap placements basically we just have our two lining and two zipper pieces left. Um, this is the wrong side and this is the wrong side. All right. Those are marked. I'm done with this pattern piece. scary. <laughs> the first time I ordered this it didn't come with a blade and I didn't open it for a long time and my friend was like oh are you sure you didn't get it and then I kind of panicked like what if my kids find these blades somewhere um so I like put in for a replacement and I read the reviews on that too. A lot of people did not get blades with it, and you're supposed to. Uh, but the second time I got it, I just don't know where they are. I'm, I'm confident this time that they are not somewhere where my children would get them. Um, I just believe I hid them from myself because I do that a lot. Alright. So, got my reinforcement pieces. Just putting each side, and again, make sure that you're putting a male and a female side on each piece. And that you're putting them on the right side of the fabric. One second. Okay, sorry. All right. So now we've got both of these. We are going to do the pocket now. Uh, I like putting my zipper pocket on the side that has this. I I don't know. It it's just what I do. <laughs> so. We're going to take one of our pocket pieces and on the back side of it, 
we're going to trace out a seven inch zipper piece. We want to be one inch down, which if you have one of Lauren's thingamajigs, you just, this is perfect. It does slide a bit. Only problem. Alright. So now this goes two inches down. Centered. Which I'm just going to line it up. my magnet and you're going to eat so around the box but I only do the long edges just make sure you're starting and stopping at the corners <laughs> this is bad. At least get a start in there. You're going to cut almost all the way down and then go angle into the corners. You want to get as close to the stitch as possible without cutting it. Do that on both sides. And then you're going to press. And flip this through. I like to flip it that much and go in with my hair clips in a couple of spots. And then from the back, pull the rest through. Sometimes when I'm using actual waterproof canvas for this part, which this is a little bit thinner, it is easier to fold. I'll do this part and clip it and then I'll do another step just to give it time to compress on its own because I don't iron it. I just clip the crap out of it. Good. All right, so now we need more zipper. Okay. See if I can do this in less than, what, like 10 tries? <laughs> I am pretty good about getting on the first try unless I'm making a video, I swear. Ha, see? Promise I was not lying. Alright. You definitely want the zipper to be a decent amount longer because if it is too short, um, it can pull through and that is not at all fun. I promise. Okay. So now what I do is I just start taking some of the clips out on the end.
You could use um, tape here as well to hold the zipper on. Um, I just, I really don't use a lot of tape. Come on, zipper pull. I apologize, I'm having a hard time with my hands today. I like to just try to keep it lined up, centered, and then where the foot is just going directly in between the zipper and the fabric. which works most of the time. I think my interior zipper looks better than my exterior zipper. Okay. And then when we do the two pocket pieces together, we're going to leave the bottom open. We're going to be turning the bag through the zipper pocket. Um, I like to just give this a little tug. It does bunch up some from making the zipper. Uh, if these two pieces don't line up perfectly, it's okay, because it's just a zipper pocket that no one's going to know. Uh, something that I have learned and picked up on from other videos is if you fold this piece up, it makes closing it at the end so much easier. Alright, and then we're going to stitch around three sides. We're leaving the bottom open. That is our birthing hole for this entire bag. Make sure you're not sewing your zipper. I think this bag would have been fun to me. It's like a hot pink lining. I'm gonna need to get my hands on more of these roses later on to do the pink lining. Alright, and then you just take this like that. Alright, I'm going I wanna put this in here. I think I'm going to put it like right here. Probably would have been easier to do before I did that, but it, it's okay. I wasn't sure. Or I could put it like right here. Hmm. Here? Yeah, why not? Let's try it. <laughs> I'm not used to putting these in here. Alright, so I am going to have to be careful because I have my zipper pocket in there, but it's okay. Alright, I'll make sure that's on my way. Part of my problem with sewing the labels on is that my logo ones are really narrow. 
makes it a little bit harder. I don't know. I've only put like, I think this was, I think this is the fourth one I've ever done. So I'm learning. All right, pull these threads back. You could back stitch these if you wanted. I just think it, I think it looks better if you knot these off at the back. the fire all right so now we're going to put these together just like we did the exterior we're gonna line them up we are almost done so excited I love this pattern um I would have made like 20 of them already if I had not been making cat toys non-stop so far this year, but I'm about to get a break, so it's about to go off, go down. I'm going to make a bunch. Okay, so three sides, I'm going to flip it so that this isn't in my way. Next step is to box the corners just like we did the exterior. Oh, trim it down. With hopefully better scissors than I have. This isn't as bad as the exterior though. It's thinner. Now we box the corners. So making sure it lines up a decent amount of the way down. I'm just gonna use one clip on these because it is thinner. Just gonna trim this the same way I did the exterior. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Woot woot. Alright, turn the lining right side out. Ooh, I like that tag there. Alright, I'm glad I I'm glad I put that in there. Alright, very important. Unzip the zipper. Grab your exterior and you're going to put your lining inside your exterior. I want this to be at the back of the bag. So okay, I'm going to line up my side seams first which is a little bit interesting because those poke out but it's okay i'm 
as long as you follow the seam allowances and cut the pattern out correctly, you know, uh, <laughs> everything should match up. I like to give it a little tug and then kind of just pinch a little bit away. It just helps me line everything up. I do that for both sides. This side does stretch a little bit more because you've got where this piece is. I'm just line it up as best as possible. Make it fit and you're good. Apparently I need to stretch mine a little bit. <laughs> stitch all the way around with our regular seam allowance. I might run out of bobbin. <laughs> That's okay. As long as it happens before the final top stitch, I will be happy. I'm going to change it just in case, even if I don't run out though. Um, when I get to my connectors, I'm going to back stitch. At the start and stop of them. Also, where my pocket starts and stops, I'm going to back stitch. steps where you just take your time and move everything around as you need. Okay. Let's see here. Yep. We were almost out. <laughs> oh, there goes my bobbin. This bag is as close as possible to being a one bobbin bag as could be, I guess. Sometimes I feel like if I wouldn't have basted this one step, or if I wouldn't have had to go over this one step, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to pull my thread up. Okay. Now we're going to take that interior pocket and turn the entire bag right side out through it. And if you wanted to, you could leave an opening in the lining um, to turn the bag and then close that through the zipper pocket, um, whatever your preference is. But I do find that this zipper is big enough for the bag to be birthed through. I just have a hard time birthing anything. To make sure that all my corners are good. 
before I do anything else. Okay. Oh, I love it. It's so cute. All right. So now, I said it's so cute, and the kitten woke up and stretched. Sorry, Donut. I'm not talking about you this time. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take and make sure that I've got a good seam, and I'm going to just ever so slightly roll the lining down a touch lower than my exterior. Um, this spot right here is a little bit thicker. Be mindful there. You can top stitch the bag this way, but I really like top stitching on my exterior so I'm going to flip everything. Hopefully I don't take all my clips off. Oh, there goes one. <laughs> Two? It's okay. Maybe I should have clipped it after. Probably. It's worth it. You don't have to do the entire everything. Just enough. Okay, now the one thing is these magnets are pretty close to where you're going to be stitching. So just keep in mind, go slow, be careful there. All right, I like, or I want to start right here. So I'm going just probably like just inside eighth of an inch. I am going to do almost a five for my stitch legs. I don't back stitch when I top stitch over my connectors because I already back stitched when I put them in. So this is where one of the magnets is, and I am just going to go really slow and keep that as straight as I can. Sweet. You could top stitch at the start and stop of this pocket, um, 
but again I just want my top stitch to be just regular okay so I've got another magnet coming up um I do think it helps to hold the front and the back just to keep everything lined up as much as possible I think that one shifted just a teeny bit but I don't think it'll be noticeable Sorry, I just had a thought. Oh my goodness, I can't get it out. I have these woven labels from Lauren that say pretty as a rose, and I'm going to put it in the pocket. Um, there is a woven label that comes in the box, but I don't have it. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back right side out. heard Lauren say the term burping the back. <laughs> if you completely sew it closed with air in it, it does get like this big bubble. Um, but okay, so we're going to pull this pocket out now that everything is done. And because I sewed the fold, it's so much easier. Just kind of folds in on its own. Um, but I'm going to put a couple clips in here. I'm going to put my pretty as a rose tag in. Stitch that closed. I'm a mess today. And every day. <laughs> so, push that down in. Close my zipper pocket. I think I do have air in my bag. <laughs> Didn't do a good job burping it. Alright. Oh my gosh. Let me clear my table off. Alright, grab the strap. And there you have it. Oh my gosh, it is so cute. So yeah, my zipper looks a tiny bit wavy, but that's okay. Once it has stuff in it, you can't tell. Um, My bag that I've been carrying around doesn't have the snap here, but I think I'm going to like that a lot. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. I love that I did the rainbow cork tag on there too. And then, yeah, see, I went off a little bit right there. Um, it's okay. I could fix it. I don't think I'm going to. Because um, I'm going to keep this one. I love the little label. Oh, it looks so good. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it.